Hello, today we'll be looking at line and scatter graph or a bar graph. The line graph is the word used in science, scatter graph is used in maths. And we're going to look at how to decide if you're going to be plotting a line graph or a bar graph in an exam. In science exams, you will see that you get to um, look at graphs in different ways, either plotting, analysing or evaluating graphs. You will be asked to look at the data point and describe or explain what was happening in terms of trends and patterns. So you just write down what you see in terms of the um, your axes and, and when you're labelling the graphs. Now we're going to look at also why we plot a bar graph and when do we plot a line graph. So here it says describe the data shown. So if I was to look at the bar graph, I can pick at different points and say poverty, for example, has got the highest bar, and maybe use a numerical value of about three, um, three two five zero. I could say education is the least, and so on. And then if I was to look at the force and extension, then I can see is a linear relationship, it's directly proportional. So as force is increasing, the extension is also increasing. So you can use the values to make comments if you like. If it was explained, then you can just say when force is four newtons, then the extension is eight centimeters. You have been given a table which has got time in seconds and temperature change in degree centigrade. The time is your independent variable because this is something you have decided to take a reading every 30 seconds. Temperature is something you measure. So what we're going to look at is plot this graph, but how do we score the maximum mark in an exam? So the first thing I need to do is to draw the axes. And when you plot in this data, you need to make sure you've used the entire paper. Because if you use only a small paper and the smaller changes, then you won't be able to see them. Secondly, you're going to add even spaces. So you're going to use your grid and divide it evenly. This I've shown you in the yellow. Each of these blocks have been evenly divided. Next, I've got to label each of axes with the units to get the maximum mark. So like I said, temperature change is your dependent variable, goes on the side, and time is your independent variable, go on the bottom. Next, I need to start plotting um, the data, but before I do that, I need to find a good scale. So because time is starting in zero and going up to 120, then I need to get a scale that goes from zero to 120, but evenly distributed. The temperature is from two to 10, so I've done the same. And next thing I can do is start plotting my data. So as you can see, I've done my data plotting. So at zero is two. Um, when it was 30, which is between here, it was four and so on. Now, the next thing we need to do is draw the line of best fit. This is so confusing for some students because they assume the word line of best fit means a straight line, which is incorrect because line of best fit means a line that can go through most points. So if I show you here, I've drawn a line that goes through more points. Now, the only point that I've got left here is this point here, which you will normally circle and is called a anomalous data in science and an odd data in maths. So in this graph, you will see it's the similar scenario. This time I've got time in seconds and distance in meters. The only difference is this time I've got a um, dramatic increase and then I've got a, a study increase and eventually it becomes stationary stops. So a graph like this, you can split into different stages. So you could just say a dramatic increase from zero to 50 seconds, then it's a um, slower increase, a steady increase, and eventually it slows down. And then you can say 80 to 90 seconds is stationary. So you can also break the graph into stages and um, explain it. So I've done the same thing. I've drawn the axes. I've added in the spaces, I've labelled them, I've put in the uh, numerical data for my scale, plotted it and drawn the line of best fit. <clears throat> Again, you could see it was in a straight line. It's a nice smooth curve. And when you are doing a nice smooth curve, make sure you use a free hand and not a ruler. Here I'm plotting a bar graph. So in the same rules apply, you still add your, um, your axes on the sides. You then have your scale. Again, you will evenly distribute it. And then what you will do, you will plot your bars. So we're going to look at what rules do you think um, are different here. 
So you just the a very have you got the title, um, and what you just got is a bar. This time, rather than having a crosses, you're just gonna have a bar. So in this one, um, you've got eight pencils. In this one, you got three scales, and so on and so on. So basically, the, we don't look at both sides. So again, the way you know this is a bar graph, which I need to plan an exam, is that one of the sides have words, and the other one has numerical data. So both of them are not numbers. One is words, one's numbers. Finally, let's have a look. So if I was to get my 606 and make decisions on what graph I'm going to go with, then a bar graph is a categorical group data. Um, both axes need to be labeled with the units. The way axis is dependent, as I said. Um, all bars need to be equal width. So you can't have a, a really big bar and a small bar. They need to be same um, size the gaps between the bars and then the bar has to be accurately joined to the right height as well so when you draw in them make sure you got the right um centimeters or the squares if you're using if i'm doing a line graph line graph is a continuous data um that means it can change over time and uh, you got the x x axis and the y axis they need to be equally divided um you need to label both of them um with your independent independent variable including units accurately plot each of the data points and then draw the line of best fit um in science most of the time you'll see it's some kind of curve um where we really you have a, a linear data or straight line so just be careful don't go for a straight line if the data is a curve i hope this has helped you and you should be able to get maximum marks every time you now plot a graph thank you